Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the SAP Fiori Side Chat. We are very excited you have joined us today. My name is Eugen Winchel, and I'm from the SAP UX product management team. And today I'm joined by my co-host, Keith Fisher, again. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, Eugen. Today's topic for the Fiori Side Chat is implementing SAP Fiori 3. And for that, we have invited again a great round of experts from the SAP team for a panel discussion. In today's round, we have SAP colleagues who have been involved on the SAP Fiori 3 evolution from a technical perspective. And in the next hour, they will share their knowledge with us. We have with us Sibylle Brehm, Silvia Strack, and Tom Reis. Welcome, everyone. And to make it truly interactive, we invite all of you to ask questions and comment during our chat. But before we get started, we wanted to set up just a few ground rules. And for that, over to Keith. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the call. So uh, first and foremost, the, the rules as always is uh, we are focused on SAP UX and UX related topics. And we promise not to sell you anything. We're not collecting any information as part of this call. Uh, we are part of a larger ecosystem, including partners. So we ask you to kind of refrain from uh, promoting uh, topics outside of SAP and SAP UX. Uh, just be respectful of everybody's uh, area of focus. So um, we also have some tips and tricks for everyone uh, new to Zoom. So there is a chat window uh, that is available. If you go to the bottom of your Zoom, you'll actually see a chat bubble. You can click on that and open it and you can uh, pro provide your introduction to the group here virtually. Uh, we also have a, uh, a Q&A uh, bubble that's over to the right, I believe, on most people's screens. You can click on that and ask questions that we'll answer along the way. Um, we'd like to see you, so if you are interested in being on screen um, or speak verbally, uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, let us know and we'll put you, uh, put you on camera at the right time. So this meeting is recorded and all these meetings are uh, eventually shared and produced out onto our YouTube channel and you can see that link um, in the chat. So uh, this version of the chat will actually uh, feature some forward looking statements and some features that are not yet available. So this is not a commitment or promise that we will actually be able to deliver these things. So don't hold Eugen or especially me uh, accountable for anything we might say. And with that, uh, we'll kind of turn it over to our co-presenters today for some introductions. So maybe Sibylla, you can go ahead and give a brief introduction to the group. Hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or wherever you are. Um, a warm welcome from me as well. Um, my name is Sibylle Brehm. I'm a product management expert for the SAP Fiori Launchpad, and I'm looking forward to the discussion today. Great, welcome. And Sylvia, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yes, sure. Hello, my name is Sylvia Strack, and I'm technical product manager of the SAP Fiori Launchpad. In this role, I'm working nearby the development teams, which means that my tasks are close to technical topics and I have a special focus on spaces and pages. And I hope that we will have a lively discussion around it. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And we bring back the, by popular demand, our, our regular YouTube star, Tom Rice. You wanna go ahead and introduce yourself for those who have not met you. Sure, yeah, my name is Tom Rice, um, product manager for Fury. So we're looking, focusing on Fury innovations uh, holistically. So today I expect Sylvia and Sibylla will be uh, taking most of the uh, questions and discussions uh, going into detail since we already have the experts in the call today. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Great. And before we get started, let's actually start a quick poll just to understand who the audience is today um, and what they know about Fiori 3. And I hope you can see the poll at the moment. Yes. Okay, we're getting answers, so that seems it works. Okay, so while the poll is coming in, um, let's get started with the panel discussion. And maybe the first question to Sibylla. Sibylla, Fiori 3 had quite a few innovations lately. Uh, what actually has changed around the Fiori Launchpad most recently? Yes, uh, Eugen, there have been uh, quite some changes. So um, maybe let me go right into a Fiori Launchpad to show you um, some of the new stuff. The first um, elements, the first uh, innovations of Fiori 3 that arrived to the Launchpad were the Quartz theme and the Unified Shell header, which you can see up here. The Unified Shell header um, aims at um, unifying the user experience across all SAP products. So there should be a common shell header, and this is what you see. 
So um, all of these actions like the search, like the Poco pilot, like the, like the user actions menu and the notifications moved to the right uh, of the shell. And on the left, we got the new uh, home navigation area where, you, where uh, the end user can access all their apps sorted into catalogs like in the app finder. So it's another way of finding all the apps that are not on the screen. The probably most impactful um, innovation that we just recently released with S4HANA uh, Cloud is the new pages and spaces concept. And um, this was mainly due to the fact that we, were tr um, we heard a lot from customers that they needed another structuring, structuring option for the launch Launchpad. So what you have here, this is the classic homepage as you probably know it. And the only structuring option in the classic homepage is are the groups. So you have here the groups and you can navigate between them. But in some pa uh, cases you have an immense number of groups which is not what we recommend, but nevertheless, many users ended up with that situation and in such a large number of groups, it's very difficult to find the right apps, to find the right group. So what we added is another structuring option and um, these are the pages. Let's take a look. In the settings, the user can now turn on the spaces if the administrator allowed him to do so. And perhaps while you're doing that, just a comment for me. This is a, with it has become first available with um, SAP oh, for HANA yeah. Cloud 2005. So um, uh, the product yes, will correctly. follow. But yes. uh, yeah. Yes. So what is new is that now we have for every role in the launch pad, the user has one space. So what you you get below this um, shell header, you get now a navigation bar with the spaces that are accessible to the user, so to more or less the, the roles of the user. And for each of these spaces, there's one page currently in a later release. We are planning also to provide several pages, but for now, for this first version with uh, S, uh, for HANA Cloud 2005, there's just one page, but and the pages themselves are not very different from what you have seen in the home page. So we have apps, tiles on the page that can be used um, to launch applications. And these apps are structured into um, sections here. The end, uh, the end user can then still personalize this, um, these pages um, as, he is, as he could do it also in the classic homepage. But we have not only enhanced the end user experience, as you've seen here with the um, mainly new Fiori 3 elements, but we've also enhanced the um, configuration side of the Fiori Launchpad. This is mainly important for SAP S4 HANA because SAP S4 HANA um, is, uh, has lots of applications and lots of Fiori Launchpad content. So we needed more, uh, more tools that better support mass operations. Currently, the, the tools that we had previously before, they were more uh, targeted towards single operations. And now we introduced the Fiori Launchpad Content Manager, which also allows for mass operations and makes lots of uh, things much easier that were kind of difficult to do with the old tools. So I would like to show you this as well shortly. This is not such a recent innovation as the pages and spaces concept, as it has already been available with um, SAP S4 HANA uh, 1909. But of course, um, on premise, the release cycles are much longer. So it's, um, there has not been more recent innovation in that area. This is the content manager. Um, basically, it can be used to manage business catalogs. These are the catalogs that um, group the apps for the end user. So they uh, are oriented across business processes and um, they usually do not um, hold the original tiles, but they hold the um, references to the original tiles. So you will not 
use this tool to define what the tile looks like or um, uh, target mapping, for example, but you would use it to create cust uh, business catalogs, custom business catalogs to assign them to a user via a role. For example, we have this catalog tab, so we could look for a catalog. And then if we select a catalog, you see all the apps, the tiles and the target mappings that are assigned to these catalogs. And on the right, you can see lots of information around it. The Fury ID, you can see the app type, you can see if it's a reference or an original tile, and you can then also add further tiles and target mappings or remove them and do this for, for several tiles at once. You can also very easily copy an SAP catalog to create your own custom catalogs. You can also show the usage of the catalog in the roles. You see exactly to which roles this catalog is assigned. And you can um, also check the services. So for example, you can see, uh, this is a bit hard to see now with the panel on the right, so let's take this one. Um, you can see all the services that are needed to run the apps in this catalog, what the activation status is, so you can um, very easily find problems. On the target tiles, target mappings um, tab, you can then, for example, search for a Fury ID and then see the tile and target mapping that is and that belong to that app and the catalogs this app is assigned to as an original or as a, as a reference. And finally, on the roles tab, you can select single roles and then see all the catalogs assigned. And if you want to change anything, this is just a read-only view, you can navigate directly to the PFCG. So, Sibylla, we had a question actually that came in while you were uh, demonstrating yes. and uh, showing spaces, right? That one, uh, that came in from, uh, from Ram, who, uh, Ram, who was asking, can you actually interchange the spaces or are they all aligned alphabetically across, uh, you know, the, the header of the launch pad? Um, they are, did you want yeah, to say something about like that? <laughs> so, uh, currently, um, there is no order that you can define yourself. So actually a space also has a, an ID where it is identified with, and it's currently ordered by the ID of the space. And um, we are already thinking about how from an administration perspective, you could, you could define the order of these spaces. It's not clear yet how this could be done because as Sibylla already told, they are connected to the business roles of the user and each user has a different role. And also there is a second perspective to it because you as an end user might also want to change the order of the spaces. These are still open questions, but are not available now as a solution. Okay. Well, since we have you on, uh, since we have you on uh, screen there, there was uh, in some of the earlier chats that we've been having, there were a lot of questions about administration and authorization, single sign-on with Fury 3. So could you share with us what's changed in that manner uh, in this latest release? Yes, of course. Um, I have two slides for this question. So um, with regards to the question, if there have been done any changes to authorization or authentication, the answer is no. So with the new concept of spaces and pages, it is really only about defining the layout. And uh, this has nothing to do with what the user is authorized to see because this stayed the same like it was before. And when we have a look here, we have uh, two new elements. This is the space and the page. We've already seen the spaces in Sibylla's demo at the top of the screen in the menu bar, and these spaces are assigned to roles. And underneath the space, there is always a page which defines the layout. And this layout contains all the apps, which also define then a certain context for the user. And we have this more in more detail here. You see the space is the element at the top, then you have the page, and then you have the sections inside. And you also already might have noticed that the sections look very similar to the groups that have al always been on the homepage that you know from before. And we are talking here about sections because 
the old groups don't exist in this concept anymore. So where the groups have previously been assigned to the business role directly, we have now the space assignment to the business role. This is what you can see at the top of, of uh, the illustration. And inside the sections, you can see the tiles that are assigned to these sections. And the important and also interesting thing is you can see at the bottom where you see that the tiles are still assigned to the business catalogs. And this assignment still controls which apps or tiles the user is allowed to see, both on the screen on a page or um, via search or via the app finder. So this concept didn't change. It's really about the layout. And that you can imagine this a little bit better, I have also a demo of the new design time that we have developed. So what I'm going to show is uh, an S4 HANA cloud system. The, the role administration, which, which I will show in a second, is dedicated for cloud scenario. For on-premise, this will look differently, but the, the new application that we have developed for the new concept, this is the uh, same for both on-premise and for cloud. So when I enter the role administration tool for the cloud, I can search for a certain business role that I've created earlier. And here I have the accounts receivable accountant role. And there I can, I can see that there is already a space assigned. So this is the assignment of the space to the business role that we were talking about. When I click on it, then the navigation to the new application manage launchpad pages happens automatically. And this is the application where we can now define the layout of the page. So in this case, I already created the page. I just want to demonstrate that you can really change the order of tiles and also the order of sections. You can, you can add more tiles here. Okay, this one we already had here. So I don't want to have it anymore, so I can remove it. So let's add another one. I can also change the order of sections and this something which has also not been possible before with the groups concept. Because only the user in the end could do via personalization change the order of groups if personalization was turned on. And now I can do it upfront as an administrator or someone or some person who is uh, more near to the business. Now that I've made some changes, I save it. And then I go back to the home of the launch pad because there I will turn on the spaces mode just as you have seen on Sibylla's screen. And there I will show you how the page is looking like for me as a user that I've just changed. So I go into settings again, I click on spaces, use spaces, and then I save it. Then the launch pad reloads in spaces mode. And then you can see this is the accounts receivable page that I've just edited. The to-do list is now at the top. This is what I've done. I've changed the order of uh, those two sections and everything is there. And um, I can only see the tiles that I'm authorized to see via the catalog assignment to the business roles that I have. And that's been a very big demand by customers to be able to yeah. um, rearrange the, the sections mm. or the, what you speak of the group. So good that it's there, definitely. That's pretty fantastic. So uh, I think, Ram, you you had a question that you wanted to ask uh, live? Yes, yes. Uh, am I audible to you? Yes, yes you are. Uh, hi. Uh, see, coming to sections, uh, pages and sections uh, is uh, section just like a uh, group in the previous version of a uh, theory, theory two and theory, theory one. So when I understand the question uh, correctly, uh, so. is, is the question yes. that it's the same, if it's the same as the groups? Yeah, there is section in a theory three, right? There yes. is something called section. So in that I'm able to see all the tiles, right? Yes. So is it just this section is just like a group in the previous versions of Fury 2 and Fury 1? Visually, yes. 
but it's technically the same. not. Uh, no, so oh. because before the group was a separate entity which was directly assigned to a certain business role. And the section is tightly connected to a page. So we really need to rethink here because uh, now we assign a complete space to a role and not a single group anymore. And the, the section is here really now only for, for structuring the page and not for um, having a separate entity that you can assign separately to a business role. Okay, fine. So only that means, uh, only that means uh, if we can have a space, we can uh, assign directly to the business role. Yes. In that right. one, we can have a uh, section. Section can have multiple uh, uh, tiles. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay, fine. Yes. And uh, so, one, one more thing, one more, sorry. <laughs> one more thing. Uh, see, uh, whatever the uh, apps you are show, uh, showing in the section, are those built only on uh, Fury elements? Or can we also use like libraries like sap.m, sap.ui.ui.table and these kind of things and we can do build them? Is it only through smart templates? No, no. I mean, basically, the the, the content in the launchpad um, is un, in the, in that sense unchanged. So um, already today, you can have, for example, with Sfahana, you can have even uh, classic UIs like SAP GUI for HTML or Webdin Pro as tiles. Um, mm -hmm. um, and of course, any kind of um, UI five or, or or any kind of web technology basically behind the tiles that's possible today. Um, and of course, with space, it's the same same applies. Oh, thanks, Thomas. Thank you. Yeah. So the the sections and the groups question absolutely from a from an administration and a point of view they are different, but as you saw, you know, from an end user point of view, it looks exactly the same. So you know, the the way it's grouped in a section looks the same as the way it's grouped in a group today. But um, but of course, behind the the scenes, the the way it's handled is different giving you more flexibility for, for the layout and so on. So we had a couple other questions, including one from Vincent about, uh, he heard that Spaces is available with the, uh, with the S4 uh, Cloud uh, 2005. So how about future availability for on-prem front-end server? Any, uh, any speculation as to when yeah, that no, might I mean, occur? I, mean, I, can, I can say something about that. Basically, um, we have um, these, innovations on the uh, uh, Fury Launchpad in ABAP coming from now on uh, with S4HANA primarily on the ABAP side. Um, if you're on Business Suite, the front end server six is, is kind of the go-to release uh, for you. Um, but and this is the good news, you have got the ability to uh, get the spaces concept using um, what, what, what this is planned. So one of the future <laughs> statements we're making uh, with the, um, the future launchpad in the cloud that will allow you also to have the spaces concept and integrate to um, a front end server six uh, business suite system. All right. And so Sam, uh, Sam Bentley asked the kind of the follow on question to that, which is that will there be, you know, ability to migrate, are there some suggestions for a new implementation now so that we can design and promote, um, you know, an easier adoption or do we, people have to just plan for a redesign of the launch pad sometime in the future, right? What's the best way to, you know, design for the future, I suppose is the, is the correct way to ask that. Well, you can of course already start thinking about how you would uh, take advantage of these new, new possibilities. Um, I mean, what we're actually planning, uh, um, Sibida didn't mention it yet, I, I don't think was, um, this is you know, a first step having one page per space, but we are also actually planning to um, take, up, take the next step and even support multiple pages for a, for a single space. So you could have um, you know, for each space, multiple pages, and then each page can have multiple sections. So there's a whole load more opportunities for, for grouping the content. So you can really think about how would you want to group the content for your users, you know, talk to them, you know, do the, do the user research, basically make sure that you know how they work. And um, of course, that you can do that basically as a paper and pencil exercise, if you like, up front. Um, but uh, of course, when it comes to it, of course, you have to do the work when the, when the, when the product is actually available to you. Okay. So Eugen, what, uh, you know, where, 
where should we where should we go next in the discussion? I think there are a lot of a lot of paths that we could take in terms of uh, exploring more about maybe best practices or go back to some of the fundamentals. Uh, what what are yeah? So you know, I would actually like to quickly share the results from the poll and then ask a question towards Tom. So we have a lot of people interested in uh, Fury three and how to get started. So Tom, what would be your recommendation in terms of like what's the what's the resources they should go to? Where's the information that they can get started with? Okay, well, um, so let's start with resources. Perhaps so the 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 cool place to go to get information on Fury is sap.com/fury, our main kind of product page. There uh, you get a lot of valuable information. Um, I see from the poll, I think 40, 50% already have some experience with Fury, maybe even using Fury. So you, um, there I would recommend to have a look at the community that we have on the community.sap.com. Uh, there's a Fury topic page, so slash Fury takes you there. And there are a whole load of links also to, um, of course, blogs and so on, obviously, but, um, but further information as well. Uh, so those, I would say, are the two kind of main entry points. If you want to get started with Fury, of course, or Fury 3, I should say, um, I would say there are basically two options or the two easy ways to do it. One, of course, is actually to, for example, implement SAP s one of the newer versions, obviously, because you get it out of the box, all the applications there. Uh, of course, another approach is to have a look at SAP Cloud Platform, especially if you're a developer. Uh, there you've got the, uh, the newest technology and uh, you can, of course, use... The, the tools we have there for rapid development, especially the, the cloud application programming model makes it very easy to develop um, also using few elements um, on the SAP Cloud Platform. So what's been the feedback so far? Have we gotten any direct customer feedback who uh, who started implementing this uh, or completed implementing it? What's uh, what are what are people saying about it from the you know out, out there in the field? People like it so far. I mean, they like the the, the new design that we have, um, and of course, one of the aspects. Um, which is important about the launch pad is, um, of course, integration as well. I mean, we haven't been focusing on that so much today. We've been looking more at you know, spaces and so on. Um, but of course, um, we're, we're applying the Fury theme also to other products. And, uh, and going forward with the roadmap, you know, we want to integrate these products also into, into the launch pad. Um, I mean, what we have already got definitely, I mean, um, Sibylla mentioned that um, the, the content manager and the rapid activation uh, these have been around a little bit longer since uh, with with Esfahana 1909. So there we've had more time to get feedback, of course, mm -hmm. and um, we've got some very very positive feedback on that. So um, compared with implementing Fury in the past, it's much easier to, to to do it that way. So you know, using the rapid activation in a sandbox, you can very simply just choose the roles, basically press a button, and you have Fury up and running with the launch pad and and and, and the um, the basically the the groups there. Um, for the roles that you want to to try out, so you know, like with with SAP also, you've got all the authorizations you need and everything. You can just immediately show your business how it works. That's very very fast. Yeah. Um, and then of course you can use the content manager, like Sibylla showed briefly, to take that as a starting point and and then actually go live. So you know, then f make it fit to the actual roles that you have and authorizations that you have in your in your company. And we got some very good feedback on that. So I don't know, Sibylla, maybe you want to. I think you've been, if anything, talking with some more customers than I have on that on that in that no, particular I area. Think, I think you're completely right. I mean, what we hear from customers is really that they, you know, especially about the content manager, that it's a real um, improvement over the, or it, it really allows to do a lot of tasks much easier that was were kind of painful in the past um, because just the the tools were not uh, made for that uh, amount of of apps and. Uh, of content, so I think it's it's a real good step forward, and we are, we still continue to work on the whole um, whole administration side as well to to further um, simplify the whole administration, and of course, as you said, the the activation task lists are also a big step in that direction. So I, just a follow up there, are they uh, are they any current opportunities, Sibylla, for uh, customers to be involved with uh, giving feedback? Are, are, are they any uh, CEIs for, uh, for kind of the future features being planned? Uh, how can how can people you know, be engaged uh, to, to give feedback, uh, you know, more more directly? Um, yeah, so what we have is um, we have uh, different CIs uh, running currently, one also for, for pages and spaces, but I'm not sure if it's possible to get involved in that anymore. I think Sylvia is more, um, do, do you know if it's still possible to register for that CI? 
I don't think that it makes much sense because it's already running near the end. So the okay. end of the end soon. Yeah. Okay, but besides that, we also have one for more, if you're interested in this central Fury Launchpad um, topic, like integration from different systems into um, a Launchpad running on SAP Cloud Platform. But also there, I'm not sure if this is also quite more towards the end. Okay. Um, in parallel, we have different continuous improvement activities. So there's um, a continuous improvement channel where uh, customers and partners can submit uh, feature requests and feedback. Um, there's one also for SAP Cloud Platform user experience and another one for SAP S4 HANA Cloud user experience. Oh, okay. Great. So if you want, I can, I can um, find uh, the, the links to these uh, continuous improvement activities and paste them here somewhere. Yeah, just paste them in the chat. That would be great. Thank you. So we have a few questions from the audience, uh, mainly around the releases of S4 HANA and uh, the support of Fiori 3. So um, um, Michael Toft Schmidt actually asked, uh, we are currently on S4 HANA 1809. And as he understands, Fiori 3 is only possible with 1909. So will Fiori 3 be available on 1809? Or should they wait to actually until they upgrade until 1909, which potentially could take us, take some time? If you, to get the newer version of, of UI5, uh, we recommend um, upgrading the front-end server. So um, you could potentially um, Go to uh, on an 1809 backend system if you if you went to the front end server six as a as the hub and uh, and implemented the uh, Fury uh, three there. However, our recommended deployment approach for S4 HANA is actually having an embedded um, front end server. So so use it uh, in, embedded into into S4 HANA. Um, I mean, um, I, I'm not an S4 HANA expert, but I think even on an embedded system, you can, you can upgrade, upgrade the uh, yeah, I was gonna say, server components separately. Yeah, yes, definitely. That was the um, I was just, just checking. <laughs> Sorry, was that really the case? <laughs> <laughs> was that really the, no, no, good, it's good. I, yeah, that's what I remember as well. So you yeah. just confirming it. So yes, you can, even if you're actually running S4 HANA 1809, you can in fact upgrade the, uh, the front end server component of, of your installation to the front end server six. And then you can also get um, not only the, the newer SAP UI5 version, but also the, the uh, Fury apps um, of S4 HANA then um, running and tested with that SAP UI5 version. So that's why um, it's important to upgrade the front end server. So yes, you can with 1809 get it. So we also had another question from Prakash in the audience who was wondering, is Fury Spaces supported by the Business Application Studio? I think the question is, is in to, you could say perhaps not, not quite appropriate because the Business Application Studio is, is the next generation web IDE for, for developing apps in, in, in the web. And it's basically there for developing apps, right? Uh, individual uh, applications. Uh, whereas the Launchpad is, is the environment, the runtime environment for, for, for consuming the apps basically. So, um, so of course, yes, apps that you build with um, Business Application Studio can be integrated into, into the Fury Launchpad but it's not something you explicitly do in the business application studio. Um, maybe a quick question to Sibylla and Sylvia. Um, you've been very close uh, to development uh, lately with regards to Fiori 3 development. Um, do you have any best practices that you can share what you've seen, what worked quite nicely, what, uh, what things should be avoided? Uh, is there anything that, that in particular you, you would like to, to share with the audience? I can start answering that question. Uh, so for this, I would also like to share my screen. So what SAP already does is SAP delivers templates for spaces and pages so that customers already know um, how the pages and spaces could be used and also should be used. So somehow best practice content or best practice layout, so to say. So when I'm going again into the maintain business roles application, and then I have the possibility to create a business role from a template. This is of course a cloud related what I'm doing now here. Um, so here I can search for a business role template where I want to create the business role from. I'm choosing the billing clerk. And here I just enter a new business role ID. And here I can add a 
new space to the role directly. And what is happening here, I choose to create an assigned launchpad space based on space template. And when I'm doing this, then I'm first navigated to my new role. And when I now have a look at the page that has been automatically created with it, I can see that it already has some content. So it already contains sections and, and also apps. And this is what SAP already did, at least with S4HANA Cloud 2005 with the release. We have templates for several business roles where you can have a look on how should the page be structured. Like for example, you see it's, it, it doesn't contain a lot. So it, it is better to keep it a little bit smaller rather than have it uh, have a huge page and also that you see how the naming could look like. So this is what we already deliver technically. And I think Sibylla, that you have also something to share in this regard. Um, yes, I think it's in general, it's good to keep in mind the um, general recommendations, the best practices that we also recommend for creating good homepages uh, using the classic homepage design. So this is, Mainly keep the homepage slim. Do not put too many apps on it, even if there are no more structuring possibilities. And it's probably even if you have more apps, it will be easier to find the right way with the pages and spaces. You should still not overload them. If there are lots of sections on a page, you will have scrolling, so it would be better to avoid that. If you have too many pages uh, or too many spaces, then you have. Um, maybe the, the uh, navigation bar is not enough to show them or that might also be yeah not good user experience so in general it's uh, important really to focus what's on what's essential for the users just on uh, having the most important apps and keep in mind that there are other ways to access the apps for the end users so for example the search is a very good option always to find other apps you can find them with the new um, home navigation, you can find them via the app finder and also a very important um, way to uh, go to other apps that maybe not uh, on the home page are is uh, the app to app navigation. So if you have, uh, you, you should look, take a look at the business process that's important for the end user and then just enter, uh, maybe just put the entry point to that process on the home page, and then the end user can navigate from app to app and uh, this way right. access all the, the content or the application um, that he needs. So you kind and of hinted at a, con a common question there for people, which is that in designing uh, the launch pad, there's always a, a concern around performance, right? And, and you've indicated, you know, the, the, the best practices there. Do you, are you finding that spaces uh, and pages simplify uh, some of the, um, you know, the old performance issues or just, uh, or does it stay the same or does it create more challenges when people try to take, uh, to do too much? Have you gotten any kind of early feedback on that? In general, I think it's important really, if you stick to the, to these best practices that I just mentioned, then in general, you should not experience many performance issues because if you have a reasonable number of, of apps, then um, many of the problems that um, often occur um, do not really show up. It's more often a question of having too many apps and too many, of course, then you generate loading times. It's a bit difficult as maybe with lots of analytical apps. Um, there, there you might still look into performance, but I'm not aware of any specific problems with uh, pages and spaces, but maybe Sylvia, you want to say something about that as well? So in general, our goal is of course to, to have at least the same level of performance as we had before, so to, to not become worse. This is our goal and um, we of course did not have any feedback of real examples at customers, how it's about performance uh, with regards to the apps they have put there. Uh, so this is something that we also still need to see how it behaves, yeah. but of course, the number of apps is important here. Okay. So um, maybe just a, a comment back again to the, sorry Keith, to, to the um, 
to the question about Esfahan and 1809, can it actually get Fury 3? Because uh, I saw in the chat, uh, Michael Toft had added the, um, the link to the help documentation there, where it does say, be aware that SAP Fury 3 on-premise is only available with Fury 1909. And uh, I checked that. I checked that. So okay, that's why I was not sure, because of course, technically, you can up, definitely upgrade the uh, the front end server in your various systems. But I believe in this particular case, it's true that um, that uh, the, uh, the FUSC really is only available with the 1909 release. So um, that uh, I would certainly say that the help documentation there is definitely correct. So there's also a question that came in from Amanda here. Are templates, uh, template spaces, and pages information uh, available on the Fury on the Fury library? I guess with Fury library, you mean the SAP, the uh, Fury apps reference library? I'm presuming yes. that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, well, the, no. I mean the the, the templates that uh, we provide are uh, provided um, as part of the, um, the product, basically. Um, so we don't uh, describe the templates there in the, in the apps reference library at the moment. Okay. There's another question from Sam Dudley who asks, when are links better options than tiles? I think uh, in general, uh, links are usually used if you want to, to save real estate on the screen. So if you um, just uh, don't feel you don't have enough space for, for your content, but again, I think it makes sense to keep in mind um, if you really, if, if all the apps that you put there um, that need so much space that you need the links are really, um, are really needed. One addition to that, because it might also make sense to use links instead of tiles if you have really only uh, limited, um, uh, limited content on the tile. So if it's only about a small title mm -hmm. and, and a subtitle and you don't want to waste too much space for it, then you could also use links. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind that for now, we don't have links in the spaces uh, concept that we delivered with the 2005 release of S4HANA Cloud. This is not yet available there. But again, it's something that we're planning to support in the yeah. future. Yes. Um, maybe another question in terms of like uh, planning considerations for rolling out spaces and pages. Is there anything uh, that the audience should keep in mind when, when they plan for that already now? I, mean, I think what Sibla mentioned that the, um, you know, the, 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 the ground rules for structuring your content, uh, you've got more, more opportunities now with pages and spaces. So um, think about um, what you could do in the future and um, make sure you know you talk to your end users what do they really need um, for define for, for basically defining the roles uh, or the space and pages for the roles um, that you want to uh, give them yes and i think you might might want to take a look at the um at the space templates and the page templates that that sap delivers just to see what you know what we would propose as a page mm -hmm. um page content that can be a good starting point as this yeah. will be a short and hard I am perhaps one thing also to mention, of course, at the moment it's available only on the with in the cloud with Asana Cloud 2005. And um, we are of course planning to make it available then in the next on-premise release um, this year, later this year. There um, technically we wouldn't be giving uh, providing templates. We provide kind of uh, we're planning to provide um, so-called delivery uh, configuration or customizing. So basically settings that the, you as a customer can it's a little bit like a template, it's just a different technology. You can use that as a starting point as well. So uh, there, of course, you can have a look at those um, and, consider, and take that as a starting point rather than starting completely from scratch. Uh, so I'm curious, maybe Sibylla, you could uh, tell us, you know, what, what, what is next, right? Since we're talking about the future, you know, what, what is the future of the launch pad? Because we had this big disclaimer up front and we we, you know, mm -hmm. nobody's going to hold you and the development team to anything. What, you know, what, what do you see? What do you see out there, right? Because we're hearing, you know, many things possible, right? So, what, what, uh, what can you share with the group that that would give you uh, give them a little bit of insight? Yes, I mean, what's next first is the S uh, for Hana 2020 release, where we will have, um, well, we plan to have uh, the um, pages and spaces concept, including several pages per space. I think that's something that we already said, mentioned several times. So this is something that's coming on, uh, up next. Um, then we have some further, we will 
one by one slowly um, incorporate more of the Fury 3 um, innovations that are still missing, like the cards, for example, and so on. And also on the administration side, which is not really related to the Fury 3 design, we also have some, some um, improvements that uh, will be going on. So um, the plan is on the long run to replace the Fury Launchpad designer with another tool. Tom, anything else you want to share that's forward looking? That with the cards, that's something I think for next year um, that we would be able to support cards on, 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 the, on the pages as well. Let me share maybe one or two screens, uh, just also um, another important area uh, which is coming in, or planned in the cloud is um, in fact uh, a topic all around integration. So basically uh, we're planning a kind of two, two kinds of integration. Uh, a, loose, a loose integration, if you like, is, is the product switch, which at the moment, probably sometime beginning of next year at the moment, um, could start being adopted by the cloud products. It's a very simple, so that's why we say loose integration, where basically if you're in one product, let's say Esfahana, you can uh, um, use a product switch, which is in the shell header bar, and switch to, let's say, success factors, uh, as an example, or to one of the products on the SAP Cloud Platform, and simply switch to the home page of that product and then continue from there. And then if you're there, you can switch using the product switch back to the home page of the other product. So it's a very simple kind of integration. Um, what we're also working on is uh, the, the, the launch pad on SAP Cloud Platform as a central entry point, which will have um, uh, will, will support a deep integration so that you can navigate directly in place from either from a launch pad here to, to applications on from different products. So Svahana or SAP Cloud Platform products, um, or going forward uh, other cloud products like Success Factors and so on. Um, and, and potentially even from one application to the other. So maybe you're in S4 and you have a link to a to an employee, you could uh, click on the link and then go to directly to the employee screen in place from, from, from Success Factors. I and mean, that is really quite future looking and I'm not even sure we'll get that next year, that, that part, but um, certainly as a central entry point, uh, we actually are planning uh, later this year already to have the first steps of the, of, of the launch pad in the cloud. Um, and um, so you see uh, a little bit what this product switch would look like. So, you, you know, you can click on the product switch and choose the product you want to navigate to. Um, and if we look just very briefly at this more integrated picture, uh, the idea is you could have then a central entry point accessing the various products that you use uh, in place. Uh, and also um, integrating services in, in one place. So for example, the planned SAP One inbox, which would collect workflow tasks from different systems and give them to you in one place. And if you click on, on one of the lines, that would also then, one of the items that would take you to the, to the respective system to process that work item in place. So you have a sort of seamless integration. So there's a lot of exciting things planned um, um, in the future of the launch pad, certainly in the cloud, but of course also um, in, in the uh, on, on ABAP version that um, Sibylla has uh, already outlined. So Tom, that was very interesting to see like the product switch idea that you just mentioned coming back to another switch. Um, the question, there's a question from the audience that says, uh, will there be an on off switch uh, for spaces, pages, so that you can actually roll back during a transition period? I think there are two different um, places where you can switch um, the spaces pages on and off. Uh, on one side, there's the administrator side. So the administrator can define what should be the default layout of the home page. He can say the default is pages and spaces, or he can say the default is the classic home page. And then he can decide whether he wants to enable the end users to switch between those two options. So it may be if he says the default is still the classic home page, but some of the users for whose roles there are nice pages already configured, he could give um, the, uh, the option to turn it on and then they, these users could just um, turn on pages and spaces to uh, experience this for, uh, earlier than other users in the company, for example, or you could have kind of a pilot group that can switch on. Um, pages and, and spaces, but it's, um, you can only enable this switch for, for all users or, or not. So if you, um, okay. if you turn it on, it might, there might uh, also other people might switch it on, even if for their roles, the appropriate content is not available. Okay. There is one question which I could quickly answer. Yeah. 
It's about, uh, can we get one hands-on exercise so that it will be easy to understand? So what we provide in the official documentation, and I will paste these links in the chat, is we provide guided tours where you can first try out uh, how the managing launchpad uh, spaces and pages looks like. So there you can do via a click uh, tutorial, try it out yourself and also how the user can in the end personalize this. So you, I will paste this in the chat so that you can try it out. Great. Okay, so Keith is putting up a our Mentimeter um, page where we ask you for suggestions for future Fiori side chats because we're coming to the end of this one. Do we have any other questions coming in from the audience? Feel free to put them in if you wish. And while we do that, let me first thank the panel for today's discussion. Very insightful, uh, very, as, as Keith mentioned, forward looking topic already, like we are ahead of the curve here. And thanks, uh, Sylvia, thanks, Sibylle. Thanks, Tom, for, for answering all the questions. Um, I think you will get much, much more of that coming in the next few weeks and months, uh, once it's uh, available not only in S4HANA Cloud, but also S4HANA on-prem. So I'm sure that there will be much, much more coming for, for this side. And uh, with regards to actually next week, uh, join us same time, same place. Um, and if you want to hear about anything that we already have covered in the previous Fiori side chat sessions, uh, just use the tiny URL link um, there, where you can actually find uh, recordings of prior chats, the agenda for next for the next chats, and all the login information uh, for the calls. And thank you, Sibylla, Sylvia, and Tom, as always, for, for a great chat and sharing your insights. Again, really looking forward to uh, seeing how this is rolled out and put into practice. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks, and see you all very soon.